Women often ask me how to get a second date with the man they like. And I've got to say, men are asking me the very same question. And the solution I share with them may be a little different than you might expect. For example, have you met up with a guy you matched with online, you had a phone call before meeting and it was great. He was engaging and interesting, but when you met up in person, it was quite different. Even though you thought he was cute and he seemed nice, you left the date feeling flat and underwhelmed in some way. Perhaps the conversation was serious or he was a bit reserved, or maybe he was really open and warm, though you were in your head and withdrawn and every time he tried to flirt with you, you shut it down. In the dating world, this kind of dating experience is becoming commonplace because guarded and detached dating is on the rise. And why is this happening? Because daters are experiencing dating fatigue and can no longer be bothered making an effort to be encouraging, interesting or interested, or they don't want to invest too much too soon as there are other people online that could be a better match. And this, my friend, is the big reason why men and women aren't getting that second date they want. But encouragement is required to ignite an emotional connection. And when daters don't reveal a touch of vulnerability and encouragement, the date goes nowhere. If you want to start a bonfire, you need to light it and feed the fire some air. If the fire doesn't get air, it dies. So why are men and women not striking that match, not feeding the fire of interest and desire on dates? Well, my sense, and I do go on about this quite a lot in my videos, is the swipe left, swipe right culture has left its indelible mark on the way we date today. Meeting someone or a bunch of someone is now easier than ever. Because of this, men and women both go on first dates without being mindful of whether they're making the other person feel like they genuinely want to establish a deep connection with them. It's an easy come, easy go kind of mindset. And what's the end result? They both head home after the date and instead of flirting and firing each other up in some way, they go and fire up their dating apps and start talking to another online match because they didn't quite feel enough of a connection with the one they were just on a date with. Both men and women are approaching dating with a detached mindset and this is precisely why you're not getting a second date and a good chance while you're not feeling it on a first date. Stay with me as I show you how to break free of this mindset and get to know a man beyond the first date that leads to a loving and compatible relationship. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nadine Piet, a confidence, dating, and lasting attraction coach for smart, savvy women and the founder of Healthy You, Healthy Love. Now, before we continue, please be sure to comment below and let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like help with and if there's a topic you'd like me to do a video on. I want to find out who you are and what your needs are so I can support you on your path to big, sexy, and united love. And if you're new and haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and the bell button to get notified of my next video. So here's a little truth bomb. The men you were on first dates with, those who didn't call you back or didn't want to go on a second date with you, most of them, if not all, want to be in a loving and lasting relationship just like you. But for many people, the very idea of giving someone a practical stranger a glimpse of who they really are breaks them into a cold sweat. Even when genuine attraction is felt, many daters are not truly being open to love and the possibility of this person being a match. So if you're approaching first dates like a wary animal wondering if it's safe to eat the food in front of you, then keep watching. Because if you want to get that second date, then someone has to have the courage to break this disengaged cycle. Someone has to be a little more vulnerable and open to trigger or inspire a deeper connection. And to do that, let's start with the most important factor accept that vulnerability is not a bad thing. Vulnerability is the only path to true intimacy. I know, I know, it's common sense, isn't it? If vulnerability is the problem, then all you have to do is be vulnerable, easy peasy. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that is easier said than done, though it doesn't have to be, because vulnerability on a date is not about revealing every secret you have or laying down all of your past hurts and traumas, no. 
during the early stages of dating, simply revealing that you may be attracted to someone or that you like someone even just a little is all that is needed. But more often than not, men and women are trying so hard to be confident and in control on a date that encouragement is getting lost to fear and insecurity. Revealing some vulnerability with a man does not mean you're going to marry him. You don't have to be 100% sure that he's your match. All you need to know is if you're attracted to him or like him enough to have a second date. If that's what you would like, then it's important to throw that detachment out of the window. Perhaps you were hurt in a past romantic relationship. Perhaps your insecurities are a product of your upbringing. These are all understandable reasons to protect yourself and yet it's important to bring these love blocks to the fore to heal them so that you can attract love into your life again. Now, sometimes the things that hold us back from being vulnerable are largely unconscious. If you're not sure if you have any love blocks or you want to know what yours could be, then I have a free powerful quiz to share with you. You see, most of us have some emotional barriers that stop us from finding love, which can certainly show up in the way we date men. If you don't trust that someone will be able to handle and reciprocate your vulnerability, or you get anxious with the unknown of early stage dating, then it's important to find out what your blocks are so you can overcome them and date and relate with men with a sense of ease and confidence. You can find the link to my romantic love block quiz, it's in the description below. So now that you know why it's so important to be vulnerable on your dates, here are four other ways to eradicate detached dating to build a deeper connection. Number one, forget about the second date. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. To get a second date, you need to forget about the second date. You see, when your sole focus is on being wanted and desired, the opposite tends to happen. Instead of attracting, you repel. Why? That's because you become less engaging, less natural, and therefore less attractive. You're dwelling too much inside your head on an outcome you think you need to feel good. You're not in your heart. You're not dating from a place of trust and love. Men can sense this. When you're in your head in judgment, whether you're judging your date or yourself, your energy is very cranial and analytical. This blocks vulnerability, creates detachment, and stops a connection from forming. In fact, I have a whole module in my Unlock His Heart program called the Apple Pie Technique, where I explain in detail exactly how to show up with a man in your heart, making you instantly magnetic to him. Now this brings us to the second thing you need to do, be present. When you're on a date, be present. Be in the moment. This is the time to get to know the man sitting across from you and for him to get to know you. When you're on your first date, be there. Listen to him. Look him in the eye. Give him your 100% attention. Don't be on your phone unless it's necessary and don't look around at other people too much. These tips may sound small and yet they can ignite a new connection. Also, humans like to feel seen and valued because this feels good and most people want to spend time with someone who they feel good around. I know holding some eye contact and being present can feel vulnerable because the more present we are, the more intimate the interaction is. Don't run from this, go with it. Just keep breathing and connecting. The third thing you can do on your first date is be vocal with admiration. People often find it easier to voice out criticisms, but it takes a lot of practice to speak words of appreciation and admiration. If you're not used to complimenting a man, start practicing as early as the first date. Being vocal with admiration is actually a form of being vulnerable as well. So compliment him on his clothes, his work achievements, his life goals. Let him know he makes you laugh or that he's a gentleman for paying for lunch or opening the door for you. Acknowledge acts of kindness or let him know you respect something he has done. Also, the non-verbals really help too. Smiling at him lets him know that you accept him and like what you see so far. So make sure that you're warm and open, which leads to point four. Rejection is part of dating. Detached dating is often driven by a fear of rejection or a fear of liking someone, letting them know, and then not having them respond or desire you in the same way. 
Feeling abandoned, discarded, and rejected is actually part of dating. Until you meet a true match for you, someone is going to feel one of these things. Whether you're rejecting someone or someone is rejecting you, it's simply a part of it. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Just because a few guys you liked didn't like you back does not mean that you're not worthy or lovable. Stories like this are unhelpful, so don't give rejection too much thought. If needed, learn from it and move on. Rejection is ego. It means nothing. Keep dating. Now earlier I mentioned the apple pie technique and what will also help you to foster a deeper connection between you and your date and encourage a second one is another technique called the fear clash. Most people run away from love and commitment because of fear. Not only do men suffer from fear, women do too. In Unlock His Heart, I expose how to eradicate fear to build a heart connection fast, even on date one. The link to my Unlock His Heart program is right below in the description. Well, that's it for today's video. We've established that detached dating is not for you. It's time to start dating with some vulnerability and confidence to attract the love you desire. Have faith that your special man is out there and be encouraging to strike that fire. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, comment, and give this video the thumbs up, and please share it with a friend who needs help with getting that second date. It's been a great honor to have you here with me. I encourage you to choose to show love a little more in some way every day, and see you again at my next video.